Welcome to worship with the First Reformed Church of Scotia. We're delighted to connect with you in this way. And as we prepare our hearts for worship, we want to share a few things with you in terms of announcements about our life and ministry together. Um, first is just a reminder that you can always find the worship order for these services either on the Facebook post or on the church website firstreformedscotia.org. Uh, so we encourage you to access that and follow along with us and sing with us when we sing, or when Pastor Jason sings, I mean, <laughs> um, and pray with us when we pray and all of those good things. We also want to let you know, if you haven't already heard, that we are offering an online coffee hour at 9.30 every Sunday morning using the platform called Zoom. If you would like more information about that, you can email me or, um, or Kristen, our office administrator, and we can give you those details. So 9.30 every Sunday, log on if you want to connect. We would love to see you. And then the last thing we want to mention is that we have, the consistory has formed a subcommittee around the COVID-19 um, process and circumstances. So we are having a conversation about what reopening looks like, how we can honor the phases being provided by the governor's office, and how we can best care for each and every one of you. So we will continue to communicate with you as decisions are made. For now, we just want you to know that the conversation is underway, and we invite your prayers for that process. So now let us turn our hearts and minds to worship. In the name of Christ, our risen and reigning Lord. From Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless God's holy name. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his child, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. From everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him. And his righteousness with their children's children. With those who keep his covenant and remember his precepts. Let us join our voices in our first hymn, God Whose Giving Knows No Ending.
and mercy to you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. As we rejoice in the generosity of our God, we are also confronted by the many ways in which we have not been obedient or faithful to the ways of life that God has called us to. So God offers us this invitation then to bring our full selves in the act of confession to receive God's forgiveness, to know that we are beloved. So let us pray together. God of mercy, you are full of tenderness and compassion, slow to anger, rich in mercy, and always ready to forgive. Grant us grace to renounce all evil and to cling to Christ that in every way we may prove to be your loving children. In this silence, we offer our personal prayers of confession. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And it is through that grace in Christ uh, that we remember uh, God's presence in our lives, uh, now uh, swirling around us through the Holy Spirit. Uh, and we remember these words uh, from the Gospel of John, that God so loved the world, that God gave the only Son, so that whoever believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal and everlasting life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might have new life through, uh, through the Son, through Christ, the Redeemer. And so we remember God's presence uh, as we open with praise and and songs and uh, 
offer up a prayer of confession. God is present through all of those uh, hills and valleys of our lives. Uh, And as we go into the world in whatever capacity we're able right now, uh, we go with God's call upon our lives that you should love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and strength, everything you are made of, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, We'll hear more about that loving uh, uh, more completely as we continue on in worship, but we remember that God is present with us through love. Uh, And one of the ways we're able to, to do and show that love is, is by giving what we can. And so many of you have been, uh, been able to continue giving generously uh, with actions and cards and prayers uh, and also with uh, finances. And we're thankful and bless you uh, for those gifts. Uh, and to celebrate what God will do through those gifts, we sing words of praise with our doxology. of prayer. Loving Lord, you have showered your world with faith, hope, and love. May the gifts we have given help us to be faithful to you, to offer hope to those in need, and bring love to all your children. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Today we're talking about love, which is an important topic, obviously, uh, always, but uh, especially during this difficult time. So I invite you to to think about love, to think about the people you love and uh, the places uh, and those things that you love to do, even um, maybe some things that only you like to do, that maybe not a lot of other people like to do. For example, a, a little thing I like to do is actually shave. Um, I know it doesn't really look like it, because uh, I have a beard, so I don't shave my whole face, but I still shave, uh, you know, above and below. Um, so I like to use this classic, it's the Barbasol, you know, 100 years worth of making shaving cream, so solid tradition. And this one, though, has soothing aloe. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, But that's really what you want. You want something like aloe that will soothe your skin. Um, You know, because shaving can be uh, be kind of uh, uh, painful and bad for your skin if if you don't have something soothing like aloe. So you want to make sure to get the right kind of shaving cream uh, as you're preparing. So I like to, you know, pop the top. You got that nice new sound. You just pop it and uh, you're ready to go. So what I like to do, some people just, you know, they uh, get a little on their hand and they put it on and they start shaving. I like to take another step. I like to uh, find a cup that's about the same size as the can. And I like to let the shaving cream breathe a little bit before... um, before I put it on my face and start shaving. Uh, and I find just letting it breathe just a little bit uh, makes, uh, makes the shaving just that much more smooth, uh, lets the aloe kind of work with the environment and you get a really nice good shave. Um, so yeah, you, you get ready and you, uh, you start to fill your cup to let the, let the shaving cream breathe. 
sometimes it'll, all right, there we go. So I like to uh, shave, I love it because it makes my skin feel smooth, uh, makes it stop scratching. Uh, often the shaving cream will give you a uh, nice, uh, nice smell so that people will want to go near you. Uh, and it's just really smooth to the touch and it feels really good. Uh, so those are some of the reasons I love, oh! Some of the reasons I love shaving. So sometimes uh, the cup will overflow and you're kind of left with a mess, I guess. Actually, though, this reminds me of the love we're talking about today. Uh, imagine this shaving cream is God's love. And God gives love and uh, fills our cup, fills us with God's love. So much so that uh, we, have to, we have to share it. We have to spread it around into the world. And God continues to give other people love. And we continue to receive love and give it back. It's kind of a weird little metaphor we've made this morning. Um, and also, even during this difficult time where maybe we can only uh, see our families or uh, are, are feeling uh, just pain and all these, these bad things that, that uh, we don't usually feel, we can remember uh, God's love was at the beginning and God made a covenant with people to share that love continuously over and over so that uh, even in difficult times like this, we know that God created love at the beginning and, and had love fully at the beginning. And even after this is over, and we're back to our normal lives. Whenever that will be, God's love will still be present. So I guess it is our job to try to figure out how to continue to love and still love during this difficult time because God will continue to share God's love with us so much so that our cups overflow. Let's pray. God, we give you thanks for your love, that even though we're going through this difficult time, you share love and ask us to share it with others. So help to push us forward to share your love that is within us, to you give it to others, knowing that it is always present in our lives. In the name of Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please pray with me as we prepare to hear the word of the Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we bless you for the gift of your word. We bless you for the promise that it goes out and does not return empty. And so, Lord, by the power of your spirit, Help us to be receptive, to hear and see, to grow and learn in all the ways that you would have us do so. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from 1 Corinthians again. Last Sunday, we heard the beginning of the letter, remembering how Paul is writing to this early church community who are kind of in turmoil, lots of divisions and quarrels amongst themselves, and Paul is trying to offer guidance and instruction that will help them return to the mission God has given them. And now we enter the letter at chapter 13, words that perhaps many of us have heard often before. And so I want to invite us to listen as if for the first time today, and to wonder, what might this part of Paul's letter show us about what it looks like to be faithful as the church, even here and now? Let us listen for the word of the Lord. 
1 Corinthians 13, beginning at verse 1. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hmm. So what is love? The Beatles said it was all that we need. Tina Turner said it's a secondhand emotion. Shakespeare described it as an ever fixed mark. Poets and musicians, philosophers, artists, theologians have been offering answers to this question for centuries. So naturally, when I was 14 and a freshman in high school, I thought it was my turn to give it a try. It was near the end of the school year and our final project in English class was some kind of research project, I think. I don't remember all of the specifics. I just know our teacher had asked us to find a question or a topic that we cared a lot about to do research and then to offer some kind of, of representation of what we had learned. I chose to ask the question, what is love? And in the end, I was so overwhelmed by the complexity of that concept and by the sheer quantity of words out there trying to describe this thing we call love. I was so overwhelmed, in fact, that all I turned in was a binder filled with the poems, the essays, the songs I had collected. I felt unqualified to decipher it all. I certainly didn't feel like I had anything new to add. So essentially, I gave this project, I turned in this project asking, what is love? And I told my English teacher, I do not know. Feel free to figure it out for yourself. I don't remember what grade I got on that project. <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing. Over 20 years later, I now know that, that that project, the way I handled all of that, was part of a pattern in my life. When something seems too big to get my arms around or too complicated to wrap my mind around, 
too confusing, too frustrating, I will eventually hit a point where I will choose to just stop trying. I would rather say, I don't know, and walk away than to keep wrestling and sorting and trying to understand it. Have you ever done anything like that? Here's what I like about saying I don't know. It makes me feel like I'm off the hook. That's not usually true, but it still feels that way and it feels good initially. I can't be responsible for something I don't know, can I? So the unfortunate side, of course, of this habit of saying I don't know is that in most cases it's not entirely true. I usually do know, we usually do know something about the matters in front of us. But for me, I get afraid of being wrong. I get worried about speaking up too soon before I have all the pieces of the puzzle figured out and put together. So I choose to keep quiet. Have you ever done that? Well, today I want to make a different choice than the one I made in high school. I want to try being honest about what I do and do not know about love. I know that my 14-year-old self was desperate to know the kind of love the Beatles sang about, the kind of love immortalized in romantic comedies, the kind of love that compels two people to come to an altar and exchange rings and say, I do. And all of these years later, I know that there is still a lot about that kind of love that I don't know. I also know that the Greeks had a particular word for that kind of love, that kind of romantic love. And that that is not the word Paul uses in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Agape is the word Paul chooses. Agape can be translated as love. It can also mean charity or goodwill. This means we're not talking about a love that we just feel, about a love that's an attraction or a bond with a family member, Paul is talking about a love that is given. As we heard earlier in this service, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. You have heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and love your neighbor as yourself. The kind of love Paul is describing here is a choice we make or a choice we don't make. The early church in Corinth was a community at odds Remembering that context helps us better understand what Paul is teaching. Shively Smith reminds us, Paul's poetic ode to love was not written to celebrate the unifying love already accomplished in the community. She says, it was a call to action. It was not a tribute to what is. It was an intervention to instruct on what had not yet come to pass. This kind of love, then, must be something we can learn. I'm not sure that the songs in the top 40 are ever going to really be much help for us as we try to understand this agape love. But there are still other forms of art that may be able to illustrate for us some things that we can hold on to, some things that we can know. In my office, I keep the first piece of real art I ever purchased. I bought it at a college art show, partly because it was created by my friend Aaron, and partly because, or even mostly because, I couldn't look away from it. 
Erin's artist statement is still on the back of this piece of art, and her statement reads like this. Graphite drawing of a mother and child. The deep wrinkles of her face show the depth of her pain as she attempts to comfort her starving child. There is no justice in hunger, inadequacy, or inequality. There is no justice in the tears of a suffering child. Something in me knew the first time I saw this image that it was an illustration of love, agape love, a love that is given for the benefit of others, a love that is less about feelings and more about justice, to use Aaron's word, a love that leaves a mark. The love this mother has for her child compels her to continue a desperate effort to provide nutrition and comfort in the midst of circumstances where, really, she is at a loss. Her efforts carve deep grooves across her forehead and dig dark wells around her eyes. The love Paul is describing does the same thing. It compelled a man to offer his life so that we might live. And even though he conquered death, the risen body of Jesus still bore the scars of the nails and the spear that had pierced him. This charitable agape love is a choice to give sacrificially for the benefit of others. It doesn't require anyone else to lose their life. The acts of Jesus are complete and final in that regard. Instead, this love compels us, all of us, to give of ourselves in ways that bless the world. To speak with whatever eloquence and creativity we can muster in order to help others hear. To prophesy, to tell the truth with gentleness and kindness, not shame. To give generously, not for the sake of our reputation, but for the sake of others. As Paul talks about what we know as a child and what we come to know as an adult, I am aware that there are many things we all still have to learn about this kind of agape love. But we can't forget about what we do know. We do know that it is a love that has been given to us freely, without us earning it, without us purchasing it, given by the grace of Christ. And it is a love then that compels us to act. And to act not for our own sake, but for the benefit of the world. Where have you seen that kind of love? For me, it was demonstrated as the community of Hyde Valley United Methodist Church gathered to baptize me into the covenant community. This love showed up in the form of Sunday school teachers who gave their time every Sunday morning, even after a week of busy meetings and rushing kids to sports practices. This love showed up in the form of an elder who came and sat in a circle of mostly men and encouraged them as one of their fellow elders to bring a young woman under their care and send her to seminary, even though they had never sent a female to seminary before. Because of her, I was ordained. Because of her love. I have seen this love as grandparents record themselves telling stories so they can send the videos to their grandchildren while they are separated. I have seen this love as people go out of their way to make masks and send them to people who don't have access to them. I have seen this love as we all wait patiently for answers, for restrictions to be lifted, 
And even as we wait, we know the waiting matters so that we can care for one another, so that we can protect one another, so that we can keep one another healthy and safe. I think there's a lot more about this kind of love we, that we know. Perhaps we didn't realize it before, but I think that's true. So let us be people who look not to our own interests, but to the benefit of all, which includes us. Our sacrifice doesn't have to cause us great harm and pain. But we give in order to benefit the whole. God has given you the greatest love there is. How might we share it with the world? That's a question I will leave for you to answer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.
Let us pray together. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are a God whose love has no limits. You are a God who has given out of yourself, who has made sacrifices that have protected us, that have given us new life and hope. We bless you for these great gifts. And Lord, we pray that you would continue sending your spirit just as you have promised to help shape in us an understanding of this great charitable love that you have offered. May the spirit guide us and compel us into action so that we may make choices, that we may choose actions that bless the world. We pray, Lord, that your love might inform all the leaders of our country and the world who are navigating this pandemic and other crises of natural disasters and poverty and hunger. May your love guide them and give them wisdom. May your love be the thing, the priority on which they make their decisions. May your love continue to guide us in our own places of ministry, our neighborhoods and our homes, giving us patience as we navigate the dynamics of sheltering in place, giving us courage as we wait until the time when we can gather and resume other rhythms and routines, giving us hope that whether the challenges we face are related to the pandemic or something else entirely, you are with us in the midst of it all. With that hope, help us to take one day at a time and to follow after you in a mission that seeks to bless every corner of the earth. We pray these things in the name of Jesus and we offer the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, love that will not let me go, I rest my weary soul in me, I give thee back the life I owe, that in thy ocean depths its flow. Fuller be. O light that foulest all my way, I yield my flickering towards you be. My heart restores its borrowed ray, and in thy sunshine's blaze its day, may brighter, fairer. Joy that seeketh me through pain, I cannot close my heart to thee. I trace the rainbow through the rain, and feel the promise is not vain, that morn shall tearless be. O cross that liftest up my head, I dare not ask to fly from thee. I lay in dust life's glory dead, and from the ground there blossoms red, life that shall endless be. Life that shall endless be. Beloved in the Lord, 
Let us go from this space and time into this day and this world with the blessing of the Lord. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father that gives without end, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.